Hello, good evening and welcome. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. My name's Paul and I'm the Creative Director at Greenbelt Festival. Tonight we're really, really excited and honoured to be able to present to you a, a premiere of five films, uh, four films that have been made by wonderful Muslim artists in the States and the UK. Uh, these films have been curated for us by Assad Ali Jaffrey and I will introduce him very shortly. And we're very grateful for the kind and generous support of Amal, who we've worked with over these last few years to produce high quality Muslim artistry at our festival. This year, our work has taken a digital form and uh, it's been brilliant working with you, Assad, on this, this group of films. Assad, what can you tell us about what we're about to see? Well, Paul, thank you. Um, thank you to Greenbelt and to Amal for making this possible. I've been working now with Greenbelt since 2017, even though I've known of the festival from a distance for about 10 years. And I was heartbroken that the festival couldn't happen in person, but also delighted at the opportunity to help produce and curate the series of films that have ended up becoming this anthology of films that are just under 30 minutes. Um, and it's from artists that we're going to be at Greenbelt, have been at Greenbelt, have interacted in some way uh, that represent kind of the global Muslim creative voices that exist and have really made work that is just emotionally pulling, excellent, creative in its own nature. And um, I really think that people will enjoy watching this and really have perhaps some questions afterwards. So I'm hoping that everybody can stay for the 30 minute duration and then for another 30 minutes for a conversation that we'll have with the artists themselves, the filmmakers, um, and even our good friend, uh, a narrator, Abdul Rahman Malik. So stay tuned for that as well as we start No Normal. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. These are the times I turn to the wisdom of James Baldwin. Life is tragic simply because the earth turns and the sun inexorably rises and sets. And one day, for each of us, the sun will go down for the last, last time. Perhaps the whole root of our trouble, the human trouble, is that we will sacrifice all the beauty of our lives, will imprison ourselves in totems, taboos, crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, nations, in order to deny the fact of death, the only fact we have. It seems to me that one ought to rejoice in the fact of death, ought to decide indeed to earn one's death by confronting with passion the conundrum of life. One is responsible for life. It is the small beacon in that terrifying darkness from which we come and to which we shall return. All we knew was darkness before we entered this world, and we return to darkness when the soil fills the hole. If all we saw was darkness, when the light dawns, it would blind us. But we await the light, knowing that it won't stay dark forever. Allah blessed us with an inbuilt mechanism to cope, to deal effectively with something difficult. Inna mal usri yusra, after hardship comes ease. When calamity strikes and adversities surround us, we remind each other of this verse. We watched as our mother slipped away in a COVID hospital ward. My sister yells via an iPad screen. She's gone. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. This is the terrifying ride that you cannot say no to and walk away. The bell rings. Kids running around come to a standstill. I walk in holding my mother's hand and run to join the others. The teacher grabs me by the arm and shakes me violently, asking why am I still running after the bell has gone? 
My mum, an immigrant from Bangladesh with broken English, shrieks back, you don't have to shake him like he's a dog. Silence from the teacher. I was five years old. Witnessing this strength, this experience stayed with me for the rest of my life. Although I've run from the questions of who I am, as a son of an immigrant and a Muslim, sooner or later it will catch up with you and look you right in the face to ask you questions you cannot escape. This is the biggest loss in my life, but I embrace the strength I've inherited from the spirit of my mother. It comes to us all, yet death is the biggest taboo in life. When it does happen, we crumble. Our minds can't comprehend it. Despite knowing it's inescapable, we are never ready for it. Continuing the legacy of my mother, I see as a sense of duty. The son of migrants who travel great distances to seek a new life. Leaving loved ones thousands of miles away as they establish their homes and families elsewhere. How can I not passionately build a place that our parents struggle so hard to establish as home? Those efforts would be in vain if I did not continue that determination and perseverance. My mother ran a fish and chip shop in Anderton Road, Sparkbrook. Prince Charles came to our neighborhood back then and it was the busiest day for our chip shop ever. Seven pence for a bag of chips. We made a whole 18 pound that day. Immigrants sponging off the system, they say. An Asian woman running a chip shop in the 70s. You find me an Asian woman doing that today in 2021. I know nothing but strength. This is why the biggest calamity in my life, the loss of my beloved mother, I have to continue to embody the strength of my mother. We continue to build for the next generations. We persevere, we fight, we win. I say to my kids, don't ever say you can't. We can, we will, we must, in the name of those who struggled before us. There is an invisible veil that falls across vast swathes of society a veil that separates us in an increasingly polarized society. We had a mirror shone in front of us. We looked at ourselves. We have questioned the value of things that we took for granted. We realized how death was right under our noses and on our doorsteps. It was coming for us. This glitch moment, this moment that took us by the shoulders, perhaps it was necessary. It was necessary for us to wake up we realize how we are not immortal. We wear out, we age, we decay. We should embrace the idea that everything comes to an end, except for the legacy we leave behind. As we approach the pandemic aftertimes, Joan Didion rings true. We tell ourselves stories in order to live. Toni Morrison called us to a greater aspiration. Make up a story, she said. For our sake and yours, forget your name in the street. Tell us what the world has been to you in the dark places and in the light. Don't tell us what to believe, what to fear. Show us belief's wide skirt and the stitch that unravels fear's call. On one hand, makeup. On the other, a tool. Emblem of sisterhood. Arms, struggle, home. We fought our way, earned the right to pop color on our cushioned lips, beautify the world with our gift, Signs that we are here on the collar of white shirts. Pose for the gram, 
pout with our friends, tell ourselves we are beautiful, and with our body make amends. Arched into submission, like the prophet who split the moon. Holy books missed her as she parts midway. She grabs the roots, forages to the scalp, threads her finger through the forest and entangles spirals wound. Doughy, warm, greased, the color of Turkish motifs sit on the back of her carapetone palms. She is like a scaffold. Her legs house the body sat between them. The final element of her blue magic, box braids, black twists, two strands, the story of how comb became instrument to construct crowns. Girls who ride a number 18 bus in the 266, who are vegan some months but can murder a mixed lamb and chicken shawarma for marouche on others who love Reebok classics, gassing with their besties about their latest situationships. Girls who wear red lipstick, listen to Kay Trinada, gets a Wu-Tang, who consider Mutter I swear down, and have a thing for dark-skinned dudes with thick beards too, dream of losing themselves in deserts where they wrap themselves in mofas and tobe, look like Hagar, Rabia El Adawiya, and think about nothing but God, Black henna painted fingertips, flicking the balls from their thicker beads, as if on the other side heaven awaits. Cover their face, lower their gaze, sit at the feet of their shake and sing songs of praise. Look into the mirror and you might glimpse something of the love that made you. Perhaps you'll see that love passing behind you or moving in and out of the corner of your eye. The true lovers of love see it plainly. Bulle Shah, the poet, declared, Your love has made me dance like mad. Tere ishq jaya tenya tenya. Falling in love with you was like taking a sip of poison. Come, my healer. Forsaken, I am sad. Your love has made me dance like mad.
adding spices to the Orient. Beloved one, if God were to be found by bathing and washing, then God would be found by fish and frogs. If God were to be found by roaming in the jungle, then God would be found by cows and buffaloes. God is found by hearts righteous and pure. So, you've read a thousand books, but have you read yourself? You rush to mosques and temples in indecent haste. Have you tried to enter yourself? You are engaged in needless battle with Satan, but have you ever fought with your ego self? You have reached the skies, but have failed to reach what's in your heart. So, come. Come to my abode, my friend. Morning, noon, and night.
Examples you set, respect the plan of the creator. I will never forget all the love and strength you've given me. I'll pass it on and pray often, waiting for our reunion. I'm thankful for the blessings and the lessons in this lifetime. Cherish the memories you left behind. My heart is broken, can't believe that was our final goodbye. I try to smile, but sometimes I cry. Oh, oh, oh. 
Mission Day. I carry wisdom in my scars and bitter marks of what I've been through. A black bird, rebirth, flying back to you. Salt to the earth, I was caught up in the whirlwind. Wrestling for heaven, trying not to let the world win. Miraculous escape, great shape, divine mercy. Purify my soul, stay faithful on the journey. Wow. What, what a journey. Let's just take that in. I mean, uh, from start to finish, I, I feel like I went through so many different emotions myself, even though I've watched this several times now. Uh, I do want to give a really special thank you to all the artists, Muhammad Ali from Birmingham, UK, Munira Pilgrim from Bristol, um, Amira Sackett and Ahmed Zagbuni from Chicago, and uh, the reminders from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Of course, a shout out to my brother who's in New Haven, Connecticut, Abdul Rahman Malik, who would be wonderful to join me here as a co-facilitator as we start talking to the artists about these films, what put to them, what had them, what they were thinking about as they went through this process. And uh, Abdul Rahman, we had a conversation with the artists initially thinking about different themes. And we brought up things like ritual, we brought up things like legacy. And then we started talking about this idea of normal, going back to normal and realizing that for us, there wasn't a normal to begin with. We didn't want what was so-called normal, which is where this title of no normal kind of came from. But that was powerful, wasn't it? And thank you so much for threading those together. Thank you to Ahmed for actually kind of putting the entire series of films together in that way as well. Um, this was a grand undertaking, but I think the results speak for themselves. Um, Abdul Rahman, I think you're muted for now. Sorry, sorry, Pai. Uh, I was just going to say that um, uh, Asad, shout out to the artists who we'll see in just a moment and to, to Greenbelt and to Amal for supporting this this process for you and, and curating it and bringing these, these incredible voices and creative um, talent and cultural producers together. I, I think as we were, we were threading these together and you kind of handed me these films quite literally and said said what do you make of them um 
you know, these kind of themes of life and death and, and really life again um, came through for me over and over again. There was, there was a lot of like closure and there was a lot of opening and it was amazing how those two things sat side by side in almost each of the films. Actually, I would say in all of the, all of the films that they, this idea of, of, of the fragility of life, but the possibility of life and love. And um, I, 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 I think by putting them together in the way that, that you did and, and to threading them together in the way that the film did was really, really powerful. Well, why don't we bring on uh, the reminders first and, uh, and talk to them about those, those last two songs that were just, I mean, they connected so well to the beginning, but they also kind of ended in such a powerful note. Samir and Asia, the reminders, welcome. How are you guys? Good, how are great, you? Great, great. Good, good. It's great to see you all as, as usual. It was great to experience that video once again. Songs that I'm familiar with, songs that you've probably sung many, many, many times, but seeing it in this context was really powerful. So thank you for sharing those with us. Absolutely. Um, it's our pleasure. Um, the thing is, we've, we've sung those songs so many times before, and we've written them long ago. It, but in this context, it, it made it even more special. It was emotional even for us to perform them mm. when it was time to record them. Even now, watching it in the context of the whole film, it was very special. Mm. Uh, Samir and Asia, assalamu alaikum. It's, 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 so good to, it's so good to see you. And it's so life-giving always <laughs> to, be in your, to be in your company and to be a witness to um, the art and the beauty that you create. Uh, Samir and Asia, take us, take us a little deeper into, into what you just said, because you said that the, these, are, these, these, are, these are tracks that, that, that folks have heard, you've sung before. What did make it different this time? And I guess in a way, how, how did you approach your own words and your own music? I guess in the context, almost under the burden of what I think we collectively have gone through and are continuing to go through during this during this pandemic period? Well, I think for us in particular with those songs, you know, a lot of people have been suffering a lot of loss, but it's been a different kind of experience with loss this time. Um, generally, you know, there are even rites and rituals around the way that we would let go of people who are passing away or, and this time we weren't able to do any of that. So Samir mm -hmm. and I decided that if you can't go back, you have to go forward, mm -hmm. right? And so for us, we spent a lot of time. That's why we did, we wanted to choose a setting of nature in a garden among things that are growing and blooming, right? Among so much like sadness and people are dealing with heavy emotions, depression, and we've all been dealing with loss and death and things like that to go to a place where life is really thriving. And as far as coming home, a lot of times we think of home as our residence, but for us, the place where we felt most centered through all of this is when we were in nature, mm. right? And recognizing that you are a part of something much larger than yourself and everything moves in its divine order in divine time. Um, and making sure that when we talk about no normal, there is, when you have no sense of normalcy, it leaves a tremendous amount of room for possibility, mm. right? So a lot of people have taken from this, you know, we didn't want to take the heaviness without show, having the muscles to show for it. You know, and I think one thing that we've we've navigated is we've really adapted to our situation and developed strengths that we didn't know that the muscles were even weak, mm. you know, so, mm. you know, and that was incredible for us to be able to do, to be able to do as a part of this project with fellow artists and to be able to have our interpretation and be comfortable and rooted in our interpretation and not have to explain it to anybody. The art itself is the explanation of our condition. And as artists, I think sometimes people, um, forget even in talk back sessions, sometimes all of the emotion and all of the, 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 the poignancy and, and, and the expression is in the art itself. Um, and sometimes we're equally as surprised by what it is we express and the way that we express it as the people who are witnessing it for the first time. Wow, that's, that's profound. I mean, and you just talking about the, the emotional nature of your work and also kind of utilizing pre-existing work in a sense in a new way. Uh, is really powerful because a lot of us are having to do that in our lives in so many different ways. And I think what I love about you both and your music is that it's not just like, here's a song with this one kind of simple emotional angle to it. It's complex, right? It's all of those things at once. And even just listening to Forever again now and then to Coming Home, unintentionally, it related me back to Muhammad Ali's piece in the beginning as well, especially with Forever and then with Coming Home as well. And 
that wasn't necessarily something that we sought out to do, but it all connected so well. Mm -hmm. But I also find that in your music and in those songs in particular, I can feel so many different things. I feel a sense of longing, sometimes a sense of sadness, but then a sense of peace and contentment and, and all of that together, right? Um, right so thank right. you. Thank you for sharing those with us. And I'd love to hear anything else you have to say about those two particular tracks or the process that you all are in right now. Well, when we're creating things, one thing we always say when we create is we create for only three reasons. One is to learn something. The second is to feel something. And the third is to learn how we feel about something. So when we were doing these pieces in particular, we had to really sit and think about how we felt about not having any reference for the way we were supposed to move and operate or the way we were supposed to express ourselves. And it gave us a tremendous amount of freedom. And when we were talking to uh, Muhammad al Arsal, uh, we were talking about how in loss and grief, all of the standards for how you move about those things had been kind of snatched out from under us. So we got to create new rites and rituals around things like that. You know, in the ways and had to be really creative in the ways in which we honor people and process our emotions. And that's just us being genuine, you know, and um, honest with our art and expressing it the way it reaches us and the way it comes from us. So, yeah, you know, our, that's, our, that's how different even Muhammad Ali Arasal, he's in a different part of the world doing something completely different, you know, expressing himself in a different way. But it all still ties in. Yeah, and as artists, all we do as artists, all art really is doing is creating a space for people to feel something, right? So as artists, the purpose of what we do is to kind of throw out this tangible experience for people to use their senses, you know, their eyes, their ears, their hearts, their, for you to be able to feel something. And our intention as artists is not to make people like regard us highly or do this. Our intention as artists is to answer the question, can we make people feel like we're feeling when we created this very specific thing? So if you guys were able to feel it, then that means as artists, that's our measure of success. It was, thank felt. Thank it was felt. It deeply. was definitely felt by everyone. Um, I'm going to bring on Muhammad Ali and keep you guys on as well, because we're referencing his work. So I think it only makes sense to have him come. And of course, Muhammad had that really, really powerful, heavy, moving first piece and deeply personal as well. Uh, and Muhammad, I know that we were talking about, you know, what uh, what you were going to work on. And I think what you came with was just so compelling after so many conversations back and forth. Please share with us your process in um, kind of processing your grief, but also championing the legacy of your mother, all of that together. Please, uh, please share that with us. Um, Bismillah. Um, yeah. Um, where do I start? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's quite a bit there. Um, where do you want me to start? I'd what, say, were you think, what were you thinking over the last few months, you know, working on this? How were you processing what's been happening? I mean, you called it this glitch moment, right? And, and I think that that stuck with me. Um, yeah. How did that, that kind of transform into this film that you created? That was a, a departure from your, your traditional work as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the no normal... Look, one, one thing I was super conscious of is um, that COVID and talking about the pandemic and how we're feeling, how we're coping, I think we... COVID to death, really. And there was a point when we kind of coming out the back of this, where many were like, we don't really want to talk about it anymore. Let's move on. We've kind of talked it to death. Whilst at the same time, I kind of felt when making this film, I thought there is a part of me that wanted to kind of move on and say, look, let's just, you know, kind of come out of that dark world we were in. But at the same time, you know, I wanted to kind of capture the, this moment. And actually, it would be a tragedy if we just kind of went back to you know, back to normal, right? I always, I've been saying um, quite vocally, actually, that in the UK, uh, in terms of numbers of deaths, that, you know, 125,000 plus deaths, including my mother's, would be in vain if we went back to normal, right? So this is what kind of inspired me to really kind of go heavy in the film that I made. In fact, uh, it, it went beyond my own normal because um, I didn't want to respond uh, I mean, part of me was thinking, do you remember I said, do I do a painting? Do I do something very visual? Do I do draw on my iPad and do something digital? And then I just kind of felt like a, a real departure from everything I'd be expected to do even. Like, oh, but aren't you with the spray cans? Why did you do a painting? And I felt like a complete departure was necessary just to kind of acknowledge this glitch moment that was totally necessary. And even for my own craft, uh, because there were many glitches here, even for me personally. And another one of those was being personal 
I'm I'm the I'm terrible at social media. I'm not someone who you you'd see my breakfast in the morning because I keep my personal life off social media timelines. I certainly don't really talk about my family and things like that. I'm just not one of those people because I feel rather uncomfortable about it. However, in this instance, again, I just felt the need to honor my mother as an immigrant woman. I felt this would be the best way to to kind of honor her, just to kind of you know do something I've never done before and doing it very public so that my mother's my mother's passing wouldn't be in vain and it could be a source of inspiration for for many others i hope inshallah as you were telling the stories of your of your beloved mother may allah grant her mercy and grace um i found myself cheering at this 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 incredible woman of of strength and resilience but but this advocate for you and and you know uh, muhammad after watching this, which I think is the most personal work that I've seen from you, I've, I've loved your work and followed it for a decade and a half, maybe longer now. Um, and I know the incredible impact that you've had in the United Kingdom and around the world, but the incredible impact that you've had in a city like Birmingham by creating spaces for so many creators like yourself um, to express. And, and, and you know, you've opened up spaces, man. And and I and, and generations will inshallah remember and thank you for it. And yet it was this work that in some ways was like, whoa, that's where the passion comes from. That's the source. That's the woman. That's the mother. That's the ummi. That's the ammu that that was there right behind you. And 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 that was really that was really moving, man. I was I was really taken with it. Throughout the whole, throughout the whole thing, I just want to say that it was powerful. It was powerful, and thank you, thank you for going there because we're we're better for it. No, and thank you for being vulnerable in that way. I mean, I had heard the story of your father through Knights of the Raj a bit more, and then connected from a distance to your mother at Knights of the Raj in New York. But when you did this piece and everything that's that's happened in this last year, um, you being vulnerable on screen like that, I would agree with. Um, um, AR Bhai, it was it was powerful and it hit me right here as soon as mm -hmm. I watched it. And I do want to thank you for doing that and for making work that I just find to be so compelling. Seeing you as a, as a fellow artist and creative kind of continue to evolve and reinvent yourself in this way and allowing us to see behind the screen a bit was just really special. So thank you for taking us there and for allowing yourself to be vulnerable and for not doing what was expected and, and normal, so to say. And for embodying your mother's courage and all the characteristics that you regard so highly, you were able to embody all of those characteristics and you know have everybody feel the presence of your mother through you, which is how we honor our parents in the highest of ways. And as artists, you know, a lot of people when they have proximity to death and danger, they get very risk averse. But as artists, it reminds us that we have to take risks because the most important thing for us to do is to tell the truth. Right. And our, our authenticity and our ability to be genuine a lot of time involves a tremendous amount of risk. And the more comfortable we get with acceptance and people being familiar with what we do, the less likely we are to do that. And sometimes when we're presented with a difficult situation or we have proximity to something that scares us, we create in ways we didn't know we were capable of creating. And so, Muhammad, that mashallah, that was beautiful. Um, you you honored your mother in the highest of ways by letting us know her through you her courage, her tenacity, her vision, her beauty. So you're more reflective of your mother at this moment, um, probably than any other moment that we've gotten to encounter you. And I feel like I know her more deeply as a result of this work. So thank you yeah, for sharing yeah. that with us. And one thing you mentioned about the legacy too, you know, that, le that legacy goes on through platforms like this and art like this that keeps going and more people get to experience it as well, not just the, you know, Mm -hmm. the six six seven of us are however many are working with this and project. brother the beauty in that work you are your mother's son you are your mother's son yes. and you always be your mother's son you know and what I, the way you're representing and showing up you are your mother's son and this is how you're showing up in the world and that's alhamdulillah alhamdulillah thank you so much thank you let's bring in Munira to the conversation too because i know her work her poetry the words that she decided to use for this in particular come from a deeply personal space um, I think that's not just evident in the use, again, of the mirror and the reflection, but just what you're analyzing for yourself. Um, and I'd love to hear what made you choose those particular works as we had these conversations, especially about ritual and legacy and ideas of normalness in this world. Yeah. 
So first of all, just to say it's such an honor to be here with all of you, like, you know, and seeing your work for the first time. I'm so glad that I am seeing the work for the first time because I'm truly in awe and it's lovely to be in this state while like witnessing this, you know. Um, so thank you so, so much for that. Um, in regards to my work, um, so I use, I call it Inheritance Suite, right? And I use three poems. So one poem was called Blue Magic, one poem was called Red Lipstick, and the other poem was called Mole for Tobe. And I think really the reason I chose those three poems is because I was frightened to choose those poems. Like as a Muslim girl, what does it mean, you know, to want to wear red lipstick when you have in Britain particularly where you have like this contrast of people and maybe, maybe not just as a Muslim maybe even as a daughter of a Christian maybe even just society when we're living in the society where people are told what to wear what to how to look how to dress you know but then there's something that like women have done and not just women but people have done they have beautified themselves and actually in these times of struggles in these times of you know of 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 losing in these times of even times of joy some of these times this time has been joyful also what does it mean to do the things that people have done before us what does it mean to beautify us ourselves and to love ourselves for whatever reason and when, I don't know, someone, even though my mother doesn't wear lipstick, when my aunties or other people are putting on lipstick, they're not just saying, oh, I want to put color on my lips. They're saying, celebrate yourself. They're saying, love yourself. You know, when someone is putting blue magic, which is like a sort of parmaid to oil your hair, this is a way that mothers, fathers, people over the course of time have tried to dignify themselves and dignify their children, you know, in hopes that, you know, maybe if their children look a particular way, particularly thinking about black and brown children, when they go out into the world, the world will see them as decent and dignified so that they won't attack them. This isn't just putting grease on someone's hair. This is actually a form of self-defense. This is actually a way of trying to protect each other and like grace us in many ways. And thinking about Mofa and Tobe, you know, like there, there is this contradiction, you know, sometimes there's this idea that if you love God, then you have to be a particular way. And I realize that all of some, some of the ways in which myself and other people will have all of us as human beings really some of the ways in which we express ourselves and love god may seem contradictory but actually the girl who wants to wear red lipstick who wants to go out and eat a chicken donut or whatever it may be like loves god too <laughs> wants to feel embraced by god too you know um, Monira, you know you talk about you talk about beautifying oneself and beautifying yourself the ritual. I I have always found that that you beautify the world through your words, and and I feel like you know there's something like you know the word gratified, right? That when I when I when I hear you deliver those words and to share those words, I feel gratified, you know, elated. And I felt this as I was as I was thinking about the pieces, and I watched Muhammad's most powerful piece and was just emotionally floored by it. I actually went to you next. And I found that what you took was that that sense of deep reflection and you just, you lifted us into that space of beautification and in that space of reflection and that a space of looking for love, you know? And there's so much love in those words. Um, I guess as an artist, what has that search for love meant in these times when, as Muhammad so beautifully said, death has been so close. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, first of all, I feel like poetry is this tool to, like, uncover and to feel and to discover and to search. And, like, during this time, I've just been searching, you know. I've just been searching and seeking and trying to learn, and I think that's it. You know, um, what has it meant? I mean, for myself as well, and it's, it's interesting that you say love because I'm a girl who spent most of my time not loving myself. And during this time, having to ask myself questions when in the midst of losing people and in the midst of like, just asking myself questions about myself, like, and what is my purpose in being on this planet? What's my purpose as an artist? I don't know. I've just been open. I've just been open. And I think it is a process of like being open of, of laughing, of mourning, of, you know, trying to experience joy and all of these different things in my life, but in this time in particular, 
I don't know. It's just it's just something that has motivated me and that has moved me and something that I try to do. I'm now trying to be conscious of doing that, not just doing it haphazardly. I'm allowed to feel, I'm allowed to be, I'm allowed to just experience, you know? Manira, thank you so much for that. I mean, that concept of self-love is just so powerful. It comes through your words. It comes through your film. It comes through you right now. Um, I want to bring on Amira and Ahmed as well, because I think one... Um, Amira's piece, Latif, of course, speaks so much to that idea of self-love, but also in particular because we were watching your, your, your film together and listening to your words. And I just saw this reaction and response in Amira as well, right? As we were listening and certain words stood out to us. So Amira, if, if I may put you on the spot, I'd love for you to reflect on that of, of, of the words you heard and what you saw from Amira as well. Um. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. So I definitely um, I'm really happy to be here. I think in, you know, when we came together as artists to talk about the pieces we were going to do, um, everyone mentioned ritual and that stuck with me too. And so when I choreographed Latif, I had this idea of ritual and also the ritual of thick, uh, thicker right? So the remembrance of Allah um, and saying in particular, Ya Latif, right? Over and over again. And, and that became part of, of my piece. Um, but definitely, like in each of these pieces, things resonated with me. So like in Muhammad Ali's piece near the end, he mentions that mirror, you know, this is like serves as a mirror for us. And then, of course, Imunira's piece, like the reflection. And um, I think that, like, those different elements, like, tied us all together, which was so amazing to see. And when I came up with the idea for Latif, it actually was a year ago. I had the poem picked out, and then I uh, asked Asia... Uh, to be my voice of the poem, which she is so beautiful and I love her. And so uh, she sent me, you know, her voice. And then I sent it to Nevin, who made the beautiful music of Latif. And so I had the musical track. And all year long, I didn't quite feel inspired to create the piece. I was going to create a piece for stage. And then Greenbelt happened. We all met. And I thought, how can I tie in this piece uh, with, you know, the topics of the pandemic and things like that. And how do I tie in that poem with, you know, Ya Latif, which I wanted to incorporate as well. Um, and I feel like this year was hard for all of us the past couple of years. And I lost uh, my older sister this year. And I think that's why I couldn't create, you know, I felt just really depressed. Um, but Ya Latif is what I was saying next to her while she was was sick and dying. And I kept saying Ya Latif, Ya Latif, Ya Latif. And so I think that, you know, partly this film and the, the ritual behind that was comforting. And the peace that it brought to my heart was comforting. And so in Latif, you see that character struggling right at first she's cool she's doing her ritual dance <laughs> and she's feeling at ease and all of a sudden she's thrown into this forest it's dark she's lost she doesn't know what direction and then my guides show up and that is um carolyn my heart and pop and chuck two of my crew mates who are poppers here in chicago and that those were the guides you know what i mean and that's like a law like answering your prayer right like you have two paths to choose and he tells you no to this one you're gonna have to go down this one and even though that path was difficult and i struggled i came back to my ritual i grounded myself and i remembered who i was and in the mere reflection you see not only the reflection of allah right, is which what Rumi was talking about. But the gift of the mirror was also the reflection for me personally of the loved ones who have passed away. They are still in my face. They are still in my being and I carry them with me every day. 
Amira, thank you for that. And thank you for walking us through that, for continuing to use Maulana Rumi's uh, words in your pieces as well. Something that you said stuck out to me and this idea of loss and, and us all having felt some sense of loss, right? Really personally in our lives, but also in some regards, us losing something intentionally, us letting go of things intentionally as well and coming back to perhaps what the essence is for us. I saw that in all of the films and I see that in all of your work right now. Um, we have to wrap up, but I'd like to get any last reflections on that from anyone about what it means to lose things that are important, but also lose the things that you don't need in order to kind of help redefine yourself. And maybe we can get a comment from everyone as we, as we wrap up this session. We can go first. So I had a, a pretty devastating loss in my life too, and I couldn't really talk about it because I wasn't sure how I felt about it. So I just had to create about it. Um, and I think as artists, sometimes that theory of, of dualism for us, it gives us a, a, a responsibility to show people the spaces in between, right? If somebody's not this and they're not that, or grief is supposed to be like this, or supposed to be like that, we kind of show people with our art the spaces in between those things. And I think that everybody's piece kind of like showed that, like, with with Munira's piece when she's basically saying, I don't fit here and I don't fit there, but here's the space in between. When Muhammad Ali is saying, I know some people grieve like this and some people grieve like that, here's the space in between. And, and Amira was literally choosing between two paths. I think that everybody did a tremendous job of executing the fact that normalcy is not belonging on one side or the other, but somewhere along the spectrum in between. Um, as far as myself, I'm I'm thankful to have the companionship of everyone here and to have known you guys for so long and thankful to Asif for curating it and bringing it all back together full circle. We are all artists who, uh, you know, whether it's Amira dancing, Munira with poetry, or Muhammad Ali Aerosol with art and painting, we've all been in a space where we felt like we were one foot in and one foot out, where we couldn't necessarily do one or the other without compromising the other. So I'm thankful for you guys for embodying both worlds, yeah. the art and the spirituality, especially Munira in your piece when you're talking about a certain type of girl who wears certain type of sneakers, but who could still pray and still walk the street. It's that street righteousness that we all have. That's right. And I'm really thankful for all of that. So thank you all. Thank, thank you, you all. Keep showing everybody the spaces in between, y'all. That's our responsibility. Awesome. Awesome. You're can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Ahmed, I'd love for you to kind of reflect on the whole as somebody who was able to watch each of the films, get to know them intimately, and then, of course, have a hand in putting everything together, um, plus working on multiple components, you know. What do you see in terms of um, the through lines and kind of threading it all together? First, assalamu alaikum, uh, everybody. How y'all doing? And uh, thank you, everyone, in the comment section. I can see a lot of beautiful comments right here. Um, Man, this was so like emotional and heavy, to be honest. Uh, when I first like um, when first Asit told me about this whole um, work, I was like, oh, my God. But I just we just finished Latif and Latif was kind of like emotionally like, you know, impactful and heavy. And uh, and I was like, oh, boy. And we started the, the process of like just figuring out what we're going to do with all the films and stuff like that and, and mapping kind of like the whole like uh uh, uh film structure and, and 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 honestly this i would say this is one of my favorite film works that i've, I've like so far worked on and and um like i was watching muhammad uh ali's film and it, and it and it brought back a lot of memories honestly I me mean, myself i lost my grandma because of covid and it was hard um so i i felt that and i was like i gotta edit this and i gotta uh direct the whole thing and put it together and uh, it wasn't easy but at the same time it was beautiful it was fascinating um i was like on a roller coaster of like just emotions uh, and I had to kind of like, this is going to be here. This is going to be here. And the beautiful thing, have like this really helpful and like professional team. Um, have like, us to be honest, he was like really there. Um, uh, Abdurrahman too, Amira. And um, 
going to Latif, Latif was like a really, really like beautiful piece to work on. Um, every time Amira would give me these ideas to go like, hey, I have this, I have this idea. I want it to be a film. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> we did the first piece together it was Sakina. Sakina got three international film awards. And this one, Latif, I was like, oh my God, I really want to do something like this. I wanna I wanna go longer with films. I want to have like longer films, not just shorts. It was a short film, but it was longer than uh the the one I did before. So I was like happy about that. And I felt like kind of like that was a challenge too. And working on the entire film, that was also a challenge because like I kind of like went uh further uh and and uh yeah so i am so honored to be here with y'all and uh yes well, I, that, I just want to say thank you because um you not only did collaborate with amir to create one of the films of course but also edited and directed the anthology yeah. that we've created so thank you absolutely um I, I do want to say there was a magical moment in the edit where um abdul rahman's last piece and the reminders songs just came together musically so well that was really beautiful. And I, you know, when you're doing this work and you, when you're doing it from a spiritual perspective inside of you, whatever that may mean to you, sometimes when those things just come together, you know you're doing oh. it right because something else is guiding you beyond your own hands. Um, Munira, Muhammad, I'd love some last words. And then maybe Abdul Rahman Malik can have our closing kind of synopsis for us. Uh, Munira, over to you first. I mean, I'm not really sure what to say. Everything has been said. It was a wonderful experience. Like, I feel, I honestly feel like, uh, you know, in collaborating with this um, this group of wonderful people, like, I feel like I'm collaborating with, like, giants, like, creatively, spiritually, on a, you know, humanly, you know, whatever that means. But, like, I feel so honoured and I feel like this experience is something that I'm going to really take on and use in, in in my work moving forward that like tapping into that I think I'm a person who's always pretty open but when you're open about things that just becomes a form of normality but then what about the things that you don't say what about the things that you don't tap into and like um this space has allowed me to be brave and like watching all of you being brave and talking those things is just something that goes beyond art it go is is on a real so level so again i'm just really thankful um yeah i i just like to add and i think i say this and uh, echo these words from all of the artists uh thank you asad uh you always seem to fall back and like to sit in the shadows um but you are often you know always a source of kind of pushing us giving us that freedom you know my god you know n do not underestimate what you bring to the table which is bringing all these all these artists that have met most of you and you've kind of globally brought these like-minded individuals together and the synergy and curated it so beautifully um but more importantly i'd say the fact that you empower us you encourage us you know you you tell us to improve on certain things you, you you're able to give that guidance and i think that you know that's a really special quality mashallah and uh I thank you for the opportunity. You know, even the the stuff I, I brought to the table. If you hadn't given me that freedom, in fact, I was kind of a bit lost with the freedom because you were kind of like, you know, do what you want to do. And and those are the those are the kind of nice projects when you kind of have just an open open brief. So thank you uh, for being that. And Abdurrahman Malik, I just also just want to add. You know, I feel like I'm in, in like in really kind of safe hands because we've got people who have who've been around. I'm not, not kind of judging your ages or anything, but you've been around and you've seen, you know, when you mentioned a decade and a half, two decades even, you've seen the evolution of how our communities have kind of creatively, you know, matured or immatured even. And 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 it's just really nice to be in those hands of people who've seen the journey and seen how it's evolved. And I think we need to continue that. I think it's such an important thing to have people who like yourselves, Abdurrahman, Assad, who have been in cultural kind of creators and, and thinkers that can can work with us and even guide us as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed, and thank you everyone. I, I you know, you we were talking about Latif and we know that Latif uh, is one of the names of God and it means 
and it implies grace and subtlety. And I come back to grace because, boy, each of your contributions had so much grace in it, so, so much subtlety. It took us to those some of those quiet places, the places of decision, the places of pain, the places of remembrance, the places of loss, the places of beauty, places of returning home, places of wholeness and, and fragmentation. Uh, this was all lotof. This was all grace, um, really communicated um, as if you were one, and yet we were all over the world and all these different places we were we were in. And, and I found myself turning to the poetry of people like Bulle Shah and, and to, to James Baldwin and Toni Morrison and, and finding that all of these creators across literally centuries, right, Asabai, were all looking for grace, weren't they? And they weren't finding it in the end in the institutions and the hallowed halls of the academy. They weren't finding it in the mosques and the temples and the madrasas. They were finding it with people on the path, in the woods, with creation, with other human beings. And they were finding it in themselves. And, and I think that depth of going into, in, into ourselves and what you have all done by going into yourselves, reading yourselves, as Bolle Shah would say, you know, read yourself and you'll find the, the answers because all of that divine stuff is just woven, woven into us. Um, you've demonstrated it uh, this evening with this, with this work. And I said, I, I want to echo what Muhammad said and what all of us feel. Um, you've been an incredible global force for a long time, uh, a convener, a visionary, but someone who with a great deal of love gives and convenes space for people to go farther than they knew they could go. They could go. So thank you. Thank you for curating and thank you for, for bringing this together. And, and um, what, a, what a beautiful, what a beautiful project. And, and I'm honored to have been a, a, just, a, just a small part of it with all of you. Well, thank you all. And I want to reflect that thanks uh, as, as the mirror has shown us, uh, because all of you have made this possible. All of you are always wonderful and great to work with. In the same way, I want to thank Greenbelt and Paul Northup because they've given this platform to us as Muslim artists, as other artists, and have always just been really open. And Paul, especially a great thought partner. Um, and for years now, I've kind of seen this manifest. So I want to thank him as well, especially, but Greenbelt Festival as a whole. I do want to thank Amal for having the, the vision to continue supporting Greenbelt and this work. And thank everyone for tuning in and watching as well. This was no normal. It will be up um, and alive, so you can come back to this, share this with your friends. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a good rest of your day and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Salams, everyone.